This Snapdragon laptop is almost perfect. And using it over the past couple of months has convinced me that even for really demanding creative work, we are right on the cusp of Qualcomm being a really viable alternative to x86. That's not just because the Honor Magic Book Art 14 here is a fantastically performant laptop with a unique webcam-based party trick, it's also because the compatibility gap between Windows on ARM and x86 has narrowed significantly since I first took a look at some early x Elite laptops last summer. That's helped along by the fact that this laptop is running a higher tier x Elite than most of the competition, plus 32 gigs of RAM, double what you get in the vast majority of Qualcomm powered computers. So all of that adds up to a Windows PC that sips power, looks great, lasts all day, and comes really close to matching Apple Silicon in video editing and the like. So let's jump into what I love about this laptop, how Windows on ARM has evolved over the past few months, and the places where this chip and this ecosystem still have some work to do. Let's get into it. So the Magic Book 14 Art aims to pack pro-level performance into an air-tier laptop. Its display size of 14.6 inches is only a hair smaller than Apple's larger MacBook Air, but its weight of just over one kilo makes it lighter and easier to lug around than even the 13-inch Air. That's LG Gram territory in a laptop that still gives you a premium feeling magnesium alloy enclosure. And if you're so inclined, you can definitely perch this thing on your palm and tap away at it for a few minutes without too much hand strain. The main big deal hardware feature aside from the Qualcomm chip is the Magic Book's display, specifically the lack of any real display cutout or larger borders to fit in a webcam. That gives you an insane 97% screen to body ratio that's immersive for media and just information dense when you need to get things done. The OLED panel itself boasts 700 nits of peak brightness, not quite MacBook Pro territory, but reasonably close. It is pretty reflection prone though, especially compared to recent MacBooks. A little disappointing, but not something you'll really notice unless you are working outside in bright daylight or in a room absolutely flooded with natural light. Still kind of a downer considering it is OLED and you're mostly gonna want to use it with darker themes enabled, which just makes those reflections more noticeable. In any case, this is a pretty great looking display and the 3.1K resolution and svelte borders really means you can get a lot of information density out of this panel, especially if you knock it down to 175% display scaling in Windows. The Magic Book's little webcam trick is something we saw last year with the Intel version of this device, but I still love it because it solves multiple problems in an elegant and simple way. The camera is detachable and most of the time lives in this little silo on the left edge of the laptop. When you need it, simply push to undock it, then detach it from the magnetic cubby hole and attach it up top. The pogo pin connector here works in either direction, so you can also present stuff from behind the laptop on video calls if you like. And naturally, having it physically disconnected from the device when it's not in use is an extra privacy and security reassurance. The trade-off though is that image quality definitely isn't the best in this price class, a little softer and muddier than I would personally like to see, and of course there is always the potential for something like this to go missing if you're careless or just unlucky. There is of course plenty more to talk about hardware-wise. The trackpad here is appropriately large for a laptop in this class, and surprisingly comes really close to the responsiveness and haptics of a MacBook's trackpad. Like Apple's devices, it uses a pressure-sensitive layer as opposed to a physical switch, with feedback being provided by the haptic motor. I'd say it's around 90 to 95% as responsive as what you get on an Apple machine. I'd probably say this is the nicest feeling trackpad that I've used in any non-Apple device. There's also a reasonable, if not overly generous, loadout of ports, two USB-C 3.2 ports, though disappointingly these are only 10 gig ports, which may limit the speed of any external SSDs you might want to add, along with 3.5mm headphone jack on the right edge, full-sized HDMI 2.1, and a 5 gig USB-A port. Considering the thin profile of this machine, measuring in at just 11.5mm, that's a decent amount of connectivity. Key travel is perfectly fine on this keyboard and the footprint of the laptop means typing doesn't feel cramped at all. And that backlit key also includes a fingerprint enabled power button for Windows Hello. Flanking on either side are the two main speakers of this six speaker setup, which I found to be perfectly decent for YouTube or Netflix streaming and the like. Not as bassy as larger, heavier laptops, but very impressive considering how slim and light this model is. So like I mentioned, this machine is running the mid-tier SKU of the Snapdragon X Elite, which is the highest tier you'll find in anything that's not a Samsung Galaxy Book Edge, giving a modest speed boost over most X Elite laptops which use the base model chip. And more importantly, this model comes with 32 gigs of RAM, which is really the minimum you want in a Windows laptop if your workflow involves heavy graphics or video work or just heavy multitasking more generally. 
What that means versus your typical cheaper X Elite laptop is that this powerful chip is no longer hobbled by what is in the Windows world a pretty anemic amount of memory. 16 gigs doesn't go far in 2025, and the extra power and memory that you get in this model goes a long way towards helping it match the current Intel and Apple Silicon offerings in more demanding graphical apps like Photoshop and even Premiere Pro. So compared to my first impressions of Snapdragon laptops in 2024, I now have a newer and slightly faster X Elite variant, enough RAM for modern creative apps, and enough time has passed for some of the early compatibility roadblocks I ran into last summer to be addressed and solved. Obviously it's worth pointing out once again just how ridiculously powerful and efficient this chip is compared to most of its competition. In day-to-day -day productivity, it's basically silent. However, unlike the MacBook Air, it is actively cooled. There is indeed a fan inside and ventilation through the plentiful speed holes on its undercarriage. And like all the other Snapdragon X Elite laptops I've used, this one maintains that high performance on battery and sips power in the process. The internal 60 watt battery is enough to get me a little under 10 hours of active use in indoor settings with the dark theme enabled in Windows. So how has app compatibility improved? Well, Adobe Photoshop ran okay through the Prism translation layer in mid-2024, but now there's an ARM native version, and its performance is as silky smooth as you'll get from the latest M4 MacBooks, even if the trackpad support isn't quite as seamless. Likewise, Google Drive's desktop client, which mounts your drive storage as, well, a drive, is now supported for Windows on ARM, albeit through a beta version. Beta it may be, but it seemed to function just fine for me. And similarly, LocalSend, which I often use as a true cross-platform alternative to AirDrop, now has an ARM-friendly version available. The final piece of my personal workflow puzzle is Adobe Premiere Pro, and that one's still a bit more of a mixed bag for a couple of major reasons. First, it's still running through the Prism compatibility layer, so the version that runs on Snapdragon PCs right now is basically just the x86 version tweaked to run okay through Prism. And while it runs surprisingly well all of the time, even with that added performance barrier, when it hits a wall performance-wise, it hits it hard. The Snapdragon X Elite support for hardware encoding of certain kinds of 10-bit video is more limited than Apple Silicon's, so certain clips need to be software decoded which comes with a heavy performance price. Same deal apparently with 6K footage even with 8-bit colour. Basically unusable right now if you have a project with this kind of footage. If you're mainly editing content shot on a phone or limiting your source footage to 8-bit 4K video, it's mostly fine, but you can definitely tell this combination of video codec limitations and the fact that it's running through Prism is holding back what might otherwise be an excellent video editing experience. Chances are we'll need to wait until the release of Premiere Pro 2026 for that long-awaited ARM support, and by then we'll likely have a second generation of Snapdragon X Elite on which to run it. And between those two, the future does look pretty bright for editing video on Windows on ARM. So that for me is the final piece of the puzzle in terms of my workflow and being able to do everything I do with Windows on Snapdragon. Gaming though is a different challenge altogether, and I haven't seen much if any progress in this area since last summer. Many older titles work great at moderate detail settings, but the compatibility minefield remains, and works on WOA.com is still an essential resource for finding out how smooth your experience is going to be. Gaming is still a bonus feature for this kind of machine, and most of the action around PC gaming on the go still involves devices with Intel or AMD hardware. There are some promising developments, however, around emulating a PC gaming environment on ARM, particularly with some Chinese brands on Qualcomm's latest smartphone chip, the Snapdragon 8 Elite. You may remember that chip uses the same Orion cores as the X Elite. And if any of that work trickles down to a hypothetical Snapdragon X2 Elite later this year, things could very quickly start to change. That is a question for future generations, though. Wrapping up what is an impressive little laptop is Honor's own suite of PC software designed to allow seamless interoperability with their phones and other devices. Notification mirroring works flawlessly with privacy overlays, because of course you might not want messages and other sensitive stuff just flashing up on your screen for everyone to see. And there's a nifty screen mirroring feature that can work in both directions. That's right, if you have an Honor Foldable or a tablet, you can even mirror or extend your PC's display onto that slightly smaller panel. Pretty neat. And that's alongside the host of power management options that should hopefully keep this device's battery in tip-top condition for many years to come by limiting the max charge level within various parameters when it's mostly used plugged in. Buying a Snapdragon laptop for any kind of serious creative work has so far been kind of a mixed bag. The top-end X Elite SKU with the fastest GPU is exclusive to Samsung's Galaxy Book range, and Samsung only ships that model with 16 gigs of RAM. 
Meanwhile, some other brands have offered models with 32 gigs, but they've almost always been limited to the lowest end variant of the X Elite. But the Snapdragon version of Honor's Magic Book Art 14 sidesteps those limitations and gives us a look at how, in the not too far future, this kind of Windows PC could rival Intel and AMD for demanding workloads like video production, all while offering near Apple levels of performance per watt. This laptop is so close to delivering that right now, but I ultimately think we'll need to wait on another half year of software optimization and potentially a more powerful generation of silicon for that dream of a truly great Windows on Snapdragon experience to finally become a reality. But that's just my take. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Stick around and subscribe for more PC and laptop coverage. But for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.